Hello! Good morning, everybody. How are you all doing? Welcome, welcome, welcome on in. Good to have you here with us for our BAFTA Kids Animation Panel as part of the Cinemagic Festival. Uh, I'm Inel Tomlinson. I'm your host for the next hour. Going to be guiding you in. Nice to meet you all. We're here today with BAFTA Kids. And for those of you who don't know, BAFTA stands for British Academy of Film and Television Arts. But the name doesn't tell the whole story, uh, as well as describing or as well as celebrating creative excellence in film and TV, BAFTA has been spotlighting the artistic achievements of games for years. It's even a BAFTA Young Games Designer competition for 10 to 18 year olds. Uh, and many of the winners and finalists are now working in the games industry today. And I was lucky enough to be on the judging panel for many of the entries. And let me tell you. <laughs> Some of these games that I entered are absolutely incredible with like multiplayer modes, voice acting and some amazing gameplay mechanics with physics and all sorts. It's uh, insane. So if you want to get involved with that, make sure to check that out. So the reason I mentioned games is today's panel is all about animation. And whilst we all love Wallace and Gromit and Peppa Pig, animation is used right across the world of film games and TV. There are many different styles and creative roles we'll be here. This would we'll be here for weeks if we was going to go through them. But uh, but today we're going to meet three experts to give you a real flavor of the breadth of animation. So join me in welcoming Bianca, Carol and Tony. Hello, everybody. Hi, everyone. <laughs> How are you guys doing? Welcome <laughs> on in. Welcome on in, Bianca, Carol, and Tony. Uh, I just you. wanted to start with like a, a general chat about what animation you loved growing up and you, and why you decided to pursue a job in animation. But yeah, what's your favorite favorite animations? When I was younger, it was Tiny Toons. <laughs> Carol, what about you? Um, I think the nightmare before Christmas had a profound effect on me. I suppose I'm still wearing the stripes, so <laughs> <laughs> that was a great film. That was a fantastic one. Tony, what about you, man? Um I, I, I was lucky to to get um sort of the Little Mermaid, Aladdin, The Lion King when they first came out in the cinema, which which blew my tiny mind at the time. So that that sort of um that bunch of Disney films, I think, I absolutely loved growing up. Yeah. Oh, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. And last but not least. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, pretty similar for me. I watched all of the classic Disney films that you would expect someone uh, who became a, an animator uh, would have watched. Um, but I, I have like a particular love for early 2000s, uh, like Disney um, animations that were really rich in world building, like um, Treasure Planet and uh, Atlantis, The Lost Empire and uh like Lilo and Stitch and stuff they're really fun and I also watched a lot of uh early 2000s Cartoon Network so like Powerpuff Girls, Dexter's yes. Lab, <laughs> Courage yes, Curly Dog. Dog. <laughs> Lab. Uh, I was I was a bit I was a big fan of like Nickelodeon stuff when I was younger like Rugrats and ah the real monsters and Red and Stimpy and things but yeah love to see like there's a whole breadth of stuff there so Starting with Tony, I'm going to start with you. Uh, as you, I guess you've been working in what some might call a more traditional comedy cartoon style of animation. Is that how you describe your work? I, I describe my job as the, the most fun job in the world. Which, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's uh, yeah, we get to sort of make cartoons every week for for fun, and it's it's amazing. So um, yeah, I'll, I'll go into to more depth about that. Oh, awesome. Okay. Well, let's take a quick look at Elliot from Earth and the amazing world of Gumball. New on Cartoon Network. This is Elliot. He's something called a human. I mean human. I mean. No, hu... Yeah. Humans have often wondered whether aliens exist. Well, Elliot is finding out. And along with his best friend, Mo, they're discovering that aliens are far weirder than they ever imagined. But no matter what, they're in this together. Brand new Elliot from Earth, after school at 6.30 on Cartoon Network. Brand new episodes of The Amazing World of Gumball. In The Gumball Chronicles, the two friends relive memories. What are we going to do? <laughs> Some great ones. And some they'd rather forget. I'm a ballerina. Say what? 
Watch brand new episodes of The Amazing World of Gumball. Weekdays at 5 on Cartoon Network. Thank you. That wasn't going well. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> Excellent work there, Tony. But can you explain to everybody watching what exactly your role is on the, your latest show, Elliot from Earth? Um, so, so my role on Elliot was I um, wrote it, uh, directed it, um, edited it, and did some of the voices on it. Um, oh, amazing. But, but I mean, there's, it's, it's important to say there's sort of about 200 people from start to finish working on these things. So even though it sounds like I, I did a fair bit there, it's, it's really a, a huge team effort that takes, it took like two years to do the first series, which was about the same as Gumball. Oh. Um, so, so broadly, we always start with a, a, a script and an idea, um, which it's usually based on sort of something that has happened to, to, someone on the writing team and then we just try and obviously try and put that in the context of with Elliot um sort of this intergalactic space journey um but every story we try and do kind of we try and make it relatable whilst kind of meeting all these different amazing eclectic aliens who sort of seem weird on the on the face of it but when you get to know them they're kind of just like people you'd meet on earth really it's the same sort of like uh, sort of fun and foibles um, that you'd expect, and then and then it goes through this like great process that I've always been very lucky to to sort of be a part of as a as an editor. Which um, in animation you you're very lucky to be there basically throughout from start to finish. So I have this amazing window on the whole process, um, sort of like being in a factory and watching all these amazing people who can draw because I, I cannot draw um, <laughs> sort of draw and design and, and storyboard and uh, do the music and the sound. And, and it's, it's great. Um, yeah. Oh, that's amazing. What, what very quickly, what particularly is your favorite part of your job? Because it seems like you, there's many factors to what you do, but what's your favorite part? I think it's it, it genuinely is working with it, it's kind of watching everyone else work and and the, the whole thing is is always it's bigger than the sum of its parts it's it, everyone who comes who we've been fortunate to work with and we've worked with on Gumbo and Elliot maybe sort of 1500 people over the years from all over Europe and America and, and the UK and and everyone who's turned up just loves doing their job which is great and they they just want to bring as much as they can to it and then our, our roles as directors or or editors is just to kind of keep it all 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 on track around the story but it's it's so nice being surprised by sort of the the jokes and the stories the writers can bring the 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 sort of hilarious sketches and designs that the designers bring it's it's almost like just kind of being in a huge toy shop. It's just, it's fun watching. You kind of pick and choose the, what, what you, you want to do today. And then I kind of get a fun job of putting it all together um, as, as an editor and then working with whoever's directing that particular episode. So it's, yeah, I'm, I'm, I feel quite spoilt. Oh, nice. Now, I want to jump over to Bianca as you have a very different background in animation. So let's take a look at Bianca's show reel, shall we? Daniel! Oh my God! Oh my God! Oh my God! The whole time, the whole time you would, the whole time! <gasps> wow, there's loads! <laughs> okay, we need boxes. Going, going, gone! Do, 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 do. Where are they going? Oh, I don't know. Hmm. I know someone who might. Come on! <sighs> <laughs> Doesn't Posey want to be my friend anymore? Well, you weren't very nice to her. I didn't mean it. Well then, kids, I'm coming to rescue the lot of you. I'll be... Ow! Ugh, I'm bad at this. I was much quicker than Snoozer gone. You held the record. Uh, no, but nearly. Whoa! Whoa! Ah! 
planet Earth is home to so many different plants and animals, scientists need to sort them into smaller groups to help understand them all. We call these groups species. <laughs> I love it. I love it. A real selection. <laughs> that was Bianca. Now, obviously, you specialize in 3D animation, but what does a 3D animator do? And also, let's talk about the fact that you're working across games and TV shows. How wicked is that? Yeah, it's really cool. Um, so uh, a 3D animator is essentially uh, like a, a digital puppet master. Um, so my job is to manipulate these puppets on a computer that are called rigs um, in different types of special software. And uh, we do it on a timeline that's made up of lots of different frames. Um, so that's mostly what I do day to day. Um, and yeah, it's been really cool because animation is so versatile. It's used in so many different things, games, like you mentioned, TV, feature films, commercials, music videos, all these different things. I just, um, I've taken full advantage of that and have just <laughs> dipped in and out of different things. And it's been so fun to just um, meet all these different uh, creative people working in, in different areas of what animation can be. Oh, wow. Is there, is there a part of your job that you particularly enjoy or, or find creatively challenging? Oh gosh, so many uh, that I enjoy. <laughs> um, yeah, I think my favorite is probably um, getting to know all these different characters that I come across and like really finding out about their backgrounds and their personalities and uh, maybe certain gestures they do or catchphrases they have. Um, filming references is fun because then I get to uh, references, uh, just footage that we film that we use to, to help um guide the animation that we do um oh wow so like you you film yourself and then yeah references of like the movements and stuff and then you translate that into the animations yeah essentially it's the same as when you're drawing something and you look at say like a picture of it um to help you draw um that's it's the same sort of idea um and sometimes well a lot of the time it's the animators who who do these things behind the scenes sort of um in a back room somewhere <laughs> um, yeah also do you see so do you think that uh games particularly video games have shaped the future of animation oh definitely especially um really high fidelity games like last of us or um Final Fantasy series even, um, because games need such a huge amount of animations to be made. Um, mm -hmm. It's really pushed the technology side of things. Um, so for things like what's called procedural animation, where it's, uh, it's controlled by code that programmers do on a game, um, that's really useful uh, for things like um, lip syncing, um, where characters are speaking. And, uh, oh yeah, especially when, when it comes to uh, rendering animation as well, because we've come so far in terms of technology, um, it's become much easier now to render things to a similar sort of quality to, um, to what, let's say, like a, they would need at Pixar. Um, so it, uh, we would use what's called a render engine to, to draw characters on screen. Um, now what's really useful is to be able to um, to get those really high quality animations out in a fraction of the time that it would take like maybe a bigger studio like Pixar um, mm -hmm. to put out. So a lot of actually, a lot of smaller animation studios now um, are, are starting to use uh, these games engines to render their animations, which has been really cool to see. Is there any like particular software that you've, you've found in recent years that can be quite useful for new people as well as experts? Mm -hmm. um, so what we use mostly um, in the games industry and the animation industry is this uh, program called Maya. Um, that's like the, the industry standard that you sort of need to know, but there are a lot of um, uh, newer softwares that are, that are um, coming out now that are just as, if, 
just as powerful, if not more powerful in certain areas. So um, Blender is a good example of that. It's uh, catching up to Maya quite quickly. And I've noticed a lot more studios are starting to um, pick it up. And uh, there are a lot more people sort of experimenting with it in their spare time. So yeah, I think Blender is probably... <laughs> awesome. Oh, that's a good thank one. Thank you for that, Bianca. Right. Last but not least, I want to chat to Carol. So, Carol, you specialize in a certain type of animation at Paper Panther. Is that right? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Uh, stop, stop motion is my is my specialty and it's my absolute favorite like medium. It whether it's puppets, uh, sets, or paint on glass, that's my favorite. I like I'm getting my hands dirty and covered in paint, and I'm happy. <laughs> so, let's take a look at some of your work. Uh, in your showroom. Great to see so many different visual styles used there. Now, I know this is a tough question, but is there one piece of work that you're particularly proud of? I know, I know it's hard. <laughs> I'm like, so hard to decide. <laughs> um, I think the bird and the whale is probably my favorite piece of work. I'm still great. really happy with that, um, that paint on glass style. That, um, it, it was a hard thing to develop that, you know, you start a project, you don't know, you're like, is this going to work? Is this possible? So that, it's like a great relief at the end of the project where you see you come together and you're like, yeah, okay, it, this works. This, this looks good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that must be so satisfying. And, and I guess it's worth pointing out that you work across like short films, advertising, education. Is is that the joy of animation, that diversity of being able to work on lots of different places and lots of different mediums and styles? Do you think? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I love that because uh, it keeps you fresh as well that, you know, projects can be like really high intensity. But when, you know, say a change is as good as a rest that, you know, you move on to a different project and it's a totally new treatment and a new style. And it just keeps you excited about every project you're working on and uh, going for. And, and then sharing that as well with workshops is, is really nice to see, like, uh, you know, showing people techniques and getting like kids involved and in learning it. <laughs> Oh, awesome. Now, Carol, uh, Tony earlier was saying that like, the first season took almost two years to make. On average, we would, when it comes to some of your, your, your projects, how long do they take you from like conception to, final, to the finished project? I know it can vary, but what's the kind of average so people can kind of get an idea of the amount of work and time that you're putting into this? Um, that sounds really fast to me, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> the bird and the whale. Yeah, two years. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the bird and the whale took about two years in total. Um, from like you know, from writing the script to finishing the very last painting and compositing it, because there were nearly four and a half thousand paintings in it. So it took us uh, an entire year to hand paint the whole thing. So uh, hold on, four and a half thousand. <laughs> yeah. Wow. The, the tragedy is we have to wipe away every frame to paint the next frame. So we don't we don't have four and a half thousand paintings. So yeah, so I think we, we were maybe left at one. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, the life of an animator. <laughs> yeah. We're like we're like monks, you know, we're like we're sand painting and destroying things. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Carol. So I wanted to talk skills and whether there's anything you could practice no matter how young you are. Tony, 
coming back to you. Do you have any writing or storyboarding tips for the budding animators out there? With, I find writing exceptionally difficult. Um, it's because it's because it's this terrifying blank page that could be anything. The very fact it could be anything is it's it's hard to know where to start. But um, I really enjoy working with the different writers and working with Mick, who's the director of Gumball. It tends to just be a lot of kind of talking first about ideas you both like, and then you just have to kind of slowly put things down, knowing whatever you put down first is going to change. It's basically kind of like building a house very, very slowly. You kind of put down these different ideas as a, a foundation. And then we always really like getting feedback from different people. And, and it tends to be, first of all, everyone who comes to work on the show uh, sort of is the audience as well. Those people turning up for the first time, reading a script or watching an animatic you're kind of looking for their reaction first. And if something's not right, you kind of go, okay, uh, we're going to have to change that bit. It's, it's, it's kind of constantly evolving. So if you try to write something, don't worry if it doesn't come straight away. Cause our, ours don't at all. We're, we're literally working on them all the way through and we're lucky enough in animation to, we can kind of uh, change lines in the sound mix two years later if 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 something comes so there's always good opportunities but just try and share what you write i think with with everyone and kind of uh treat them as the audience as well and it's i think you you'll develop it over time um it's it's not easy so so don't don't worry um yeah and then with storyboarding um people people have basically always done it for me um um this, we've got a fantastic bunch of storyboard artists you can tell a story with like a single image um a lot of people uh tend to um do lots and lots of drawings but you can actually tell a lot with a lot less if that makes sense so try and i think sometimes try and tell a story or a joke in the simplest way first but i think that kind of comes with the same thing i was saying about writing and that you'll you'll end up with a lot then you kind of hone it down over time so so again, don't worry if you have loads of drawings and you're not happy with them all, you'll keep working and they'll keep improving. Um, yeah. But I can't draw, so I, I'm amazed that anyone who can do it anyways. <laughs> yeah. I like that, Tony. Work work smarter, not harder. Yes. I, yeah. I like that. Um, and also, I'd probably add to that as well, like when, especially when it comes to writing. Uh, I always keep like a little notebook near me because you never know when a good idea might come to you. Yeah. So when that idea comes, you quickly write it down so don't forget <laughs> yeah. it. That's always a good thing. There's nothing worse than having a great idea than you get home. You're like, forgetting it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm going to move on over to Bianca. Now, Bianca, uh, you recommended Blender as a really cool software tool to try out. Mm -hmm. Do you have any uh, recommendations for mobile applications like people could use on their iPads or their phones or or maybe their laptops? Yeah, sure. Um, so as well, I meant to mention about Blender that it's free. Um, so it's really easy to get your hands on. Um, there's for the iPad, uh, Procreate has a, is a drawing app that you can get. I think it's like 10 pounds or something. Um, and it has, uh, they've introduced a very basic um, 2D sort of flip book feature on it, which I've played about with a couple of times. And it's, uh, it's really good. Um, but you don't necessarily need uh, software either. Um, you could just do it along the corner of your notebook and flip the pages and that would be just as good, I think. Um, there's also, um, there are lots of books um, to look at. Um, so for instance, the Animator Survival Kit is the one that I think everyone recommends, but it's just because it's so helpful and so um clear and sort of teaching you the basics that you need to know um, when you start out as an animator. Just as well, being observant in everyday life uh, can be really helpful, like developing that eye for detail, um, watching gestures that people um, just do naturally, um, picking up on stuff like that, I think is really important because it's really that detail that makes the animation. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, patience, I think, is a big thing as well <laughs> to practice. Patience <laughs> is key. <laughs> Carol, do you have any artistic activities that you'd suggest to our budding animators out there? 
Um, I suppose drawing from life. That was something I was always encouraged to do as a child is like even drawing your own hand or drawing, drawing real people and drawing objects to practice. And I suppose if you're really into film and even just talking with the guys talking about storyboarding, it's just really, really paying attention when you're watching a film to the shots and how things are framed. If a scene is sad, like what way are they treating that? Where's the camera? Is it close up? Is it far away? Like, and, and that really would inform your storyboarding. It's like, you know, paying attention to what you're seeing. Like every, everything is a chance to learn. You're not just watching television. You know, it's uh, you're learning. <laughs> 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 it's work also. <laughs> yeah, it's research. research. <laughs> you're not just watching anime films. It's <laughs> <laughs> well, that leads us very nicely into our draw along with a special guest appearance from my friend, Ricky. Martin. So, everybody, I want you to grab a piece of paper. I've got, I've got mine here, and a pencil or a pen, and uh, let's all have a go. All right, let's hear from Ricky. Hi, I'm Ricky Martin, also known as the Art Ninja. I'm an animator and artist, and I love to draw, paint, and take photos. Now, BAFTA celebrates all kinds of creative roles in film, games, and television, and there's lots of artistic opportunities from animation artists to production designers. You don't necessarily have to be the best artist in the world, it's all about using your imagination to discover and express your own style. The best place to start is putting pen to paper. So, let's have a go together. We're going to draw the award that BAFTA gives to the very best creative talent working on screen and behind the scenes. It's the BAFTA mask. There's no strict rules to how you want to draw something but I'm going to give you a couple of tips that makes it easier for me to draw. So I like to start with an outline and then build my way in. So the outline of the BAFTA mask has quite a chiselled jaw, so I like to start at the edge here. Down like this, and then sort of flat across for the bottom of his mouth. And then up the other side like this, slightly wider, a bit more of an angle. And then when you get to the hair, there's a little lump out and then it's kind of a sharp angle and then flat across the top. And then round the other side, it has a little wave and then joins back up just with the jaw there. And now while I'm at this point, I think it's good to do the hair. So if we find the middle of his head, which is about that, he's got these lovely little curtains, very 90s. A little hook pops down and let's bring that up to the top like that. And he has a similar one on the other side, but it, it doesn't go out quite as far. But I like to bring these little points to the same level in the head. So it's kind of symmetrical. And I'm gonna do that one up like that. Another little wave. And the other side, very similar. Little wave in, little wave out, and then join up the hair there got these little lines that sort of show the way the hair flows. You don't have to be strict about the way you put these, but it's good to sort of follow along these lines and then join them up at the points. So I'm going to go down like that and join that one there. And then another one right round to the point there. And draw another one. I'm kind of simplifying this a little bit because it's quite detailed. And then same the other side. Obviously, I'm using a very thick black pen, so you can see what I'm doing. But you can use thinner pens if you like, or pencils. Get hair like that. So it's nice just to suggest the shape of the hair. You don't have to be super detailed. There you go, follow that line down like that. Now he's got a very dominant brow. And it kind of comes in where this little bump is on the hair. That way you leave enough space for the forehead. So I like to bring it into the middle, do a little peak like that, well, a little downward peak. And the other side. And then I'm gonna draw the nose slightly off centre, so you get the shape. Just like that. I'm gonna join it onto that bit there. Down to about middle bit. Of, his, of the shape of his jaw and then a little bit around like that and then loop it up a little bit so you can have some nostrils and I like to put the little edges in just suggest them like this 
Now underneath that you have this little bit here, I think it's called the filtering. That's just a little loop, it sort of loops down. Now his mouth, there's a little point down like that in it. And then have a little bit edges there where his lips close. And underneath, a little bit like that for his chiseled chin. Now for the eyes. Just about there. I'll do a little dot just so I know where the level's gonna be. And because the nose is turning slightly across to the left here, I'm gonna do this one slightly closer in and that one slightly further out so they're centered in the face. So let's get that eye shape. It's like a leaf on its side. And then on the other side as well. It's not looking bad, is it? So that's the basic outline. Now the thing about the BAFTA mask is it only has one eye that's cut through, so I'm not gonna do any shading in here, but I am gonna do some in this one so it looks full and it's actually part of the mask. Now, as I said before, it's about finding your own style, your own form of expression, and I'm really influenced by comic books. I love all the sketchiness, and dark lines, and cross hatching, so I'm gonna shade mine to give it a bit more shape, but I'm gonna do it with sort of just little sketchy lines like this to suggest darker areas and light areas. If you're using a pencil, you can kind of scribble a little bit in and smudge it to get that shape. Or you can use a slightly lighter colour than your outline colour. So let's start with a bit of shading. There we go. I'm pretty happy with that. It's not bad, is it? Might just add a little line down the middle here just to show a bit more shape on the nose. There we go, a BAFTA mask, which you might be winning if you bring your creative talents to film, games, and TV. Thanks for drawing along. Bye bye. All right, putting the finishing touches to mine. <laughs> All right, I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna make let everybody showcase theirs. Obviously, saving the best till last. So, Tony, first up, let's see your BAFTA drawing, please, of your BAFTA mask. I can only apologise to BAFTA for this. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like it, I like it, I like it. That's very nice. <laughs> see, very unique style there, Tony, <laughs> very unique. <laughs> okay, let's go on to Carol. Carol, let's see yours, please. I'm like, now I have a BAFTA, I think it suits me. <laughs> hey! <laughs> 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 that was great. Hey, I like that one. That's very good. That's very good. Right, Bianca, let's see it. Let's see it. Okay. Hopefully something will show up. Oh. <laughs> Ooh, very nice. Very nice. I like it's it. It's got a little bit of a smirk. <laughs> it does, yeah. Very happy BAFTA, that one. Very happy <laughs> BAFTA. Okay. Now, let's uh, let's check out mine. Okay. There we go. Hey, hey. Oh, well, superb. Well, it's, it's more beautiful. like Frankenstein's monster, but, you know, I'll take it. I'll take it. Excellent. <laughs> you got the little curled level as well. <laughs> <laughs> you ran out of hair gel that day. That's what that is. Okay. <laughs> so... Well done, everybody, and thank you for joining in at home. I hope your drawings are better than mine. Uh, but we are going to go over to a Q&A section now. A lot of you guys have been sending in your questions. Thank you very much for that. So I'm going to get to reading out some of these questions, and hopefully our panel of experts will be able to answer them uh, for you. Okay. Uh, what was your route in and into, uh, into animation, and do you recommend any specific courses uh, or ways to get work experience? Uh, Carol, uh, I'll, I'll let you answer that one. Um, I, I studied animation in the National Film School, and that was very like kind of film based, which really suited me. But there's lots of different courses if you if you know early on you specifically want to do 3D or you want to do 2D or or if you don't know at all, I think it's best to do something quite broad like that and and just try everything and see how you take to it. Um, we actually one of our um, 
full time uh, animator, she did a workshop with us back when she was still in, in secondary school. And that turned out to be a path to full time employment. So <laughs> <laughs> there we go. There we go. Bianca, what was what was your route into into animation? Uh, because obviously you delve into 3D animation, so uh, slightly different to the other two. Mm. Um, so for me, um, I didn't actually decide on animation specifically until I was uh, looking at my university application forms. Um, I, I liked I was going to do something in biology or something in filmmaking, and I thought animation would be the perfect compromise because I also I got to do both of those things. And I also really like to draw and like be surrounded by creative people. Um, so I went to uh, Teesside Uni, it's called, um, up north in, in the north of England. And I studied computer character animation and then ended up actually working in games for a while. Um, I was animating um, effects uh, for games. So things like sparkles and smoke and fog and that kind of thing. and then moved into uh, animating sort of background objects uh, in the environment and then up to characters um, and then went into TV animation after that. Um, so it was sort of like a roundabout way. Um, but yeah, I got to, I got, I took the scenic route. <laughs> <laughs> the scenic route is the best route because you get to see lots of different things. Exactly. <laughs> but the, the route started uh, by going to university. So that's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. And uh, I guess this is a, a question to all three of you. In, in, in a way, what's the differences with, between coming up with your own ideas and then also working to a brief? Because I guess uh, some, obviously, some of you guys, are, you're pitching stuff to different TV channels and they might have an idea of the sort of stuff that they want or coming up with your own original ideas and developing those. What's the difference and what do you prefer in any kind of way? Uh, Carol, I'll start with you on that one. Um, yeah, I suppose when you're coming up with your own idea as something, some seed is just sparked in your mind and it's just something that you're kind of working away on. The, and that's something you tend to come back to over time as well. Like we're developing um, a series based on The Bird in the Well and our first stop, mo our stop motion feature film. But these are big, like massive projects that kind of are chugging along in the background of other smaller work that you do. So uh, alongside developing like a feature script and like developing characters and worlds that you want to work on for a really long time. Like those are like the really big projects that like, you know, you're really passionate about that. You're also doing these small little projects where, you know, someone might throw something at you. Can you do, you know, such a thing in three months? And you're like, yes. And, and that's kind of exciting as well, because you, you've got parameters to work around and, you know, you're working with somebody else and um, yeah, it's just totally different. So as one is just a much slower, longer, kind of more luxurious process, I think, in a way. And and then the other is it's kind of nice sometimes to have a challenge of like, how can I work around that or how can I do that or how can I use that technique and can I do it that fast? Is it possible? So yeah, <laughs> it's all the same. It's all coming up with ideas and styles, but I suppose it is a bit different. It's like one is just is more, you know, you're chipping away yourself and then the other more a bit more collaborative. Okay. And and I guess Tony is is very collaborative with his work. Tony. Uh, do you prefer creating your own original ideas or or do you do you like kind of having a brief and then developing and curating a team to kind of attack that project? Uh, in all honesty, I absolutely prefer being given a task to do. <laughs> and, and it's, it's, it's lovely with someone who's come with the idea and say, do this. And we're like, excellent. That's lovely. Coming coming up with the, the original stuff is is really hard, but it's really it, it's like a roller coaster. It's mm. so, some days you're like, this is excellent. Like, well done, everybody. And then you panic a few days later, like, I can't make this. But it's, uh, everyone goes through that, I, I think, with, with original things. And it's um, you, you won't be doing it alone. There'll, there'll be producers, designers, writers. There'll be so many people helping you along the way. That's the main thing to remember. It's, it's, not, um, it's not all down to you to do so. So try not to worry. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, I'm going to have to leave it there. And I will say thank you very much to all of you guys for joining me. Can we get a virtual round of applause for Tony, Bianca and Carol, please? Yeah. Yay. <laughs> I can hear it. I can hear it. They're all clapping. They're all clapping. <laughs> I've been your host, Inel Tomlinson. Thank you very much for joining us. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.